I want to talk about this because if this is something that seems to be, uh, I don't know, it, it, the story about Better Wellington, who these dudes and dudettes mm. are, and what's going on in Wellington at the moment uh, with this um, circular that's going around. This the story is only two minutes, but there's a bunch of stuff to talk about afterwards and a bunch of other information I want to throw at you. So let's have a look at the story first of all. Wellington Posties are defying NZ Post bosses by refusing to deliver a flyer claiming it contains misinformation. It's the work of a campaign group who say they're only highlighting wasteful spending by the City Council. Kate Nicole williams has more. A flyer that was meant to end up in letterboxes around the capital that posties won't deliver. Where there is uh, Islamophobia, there can be some pretty irrational behaviour, and we're really concerned about that. Do we want to just give them a little golf clap? Yep. I mean, that's pretty cool. Up, up, up the union. Yeah, like, that's this, pretty cool. This is, this is a... This is a big thing, and I'll, I'll cover what um, David Seymour thinks about this um, after the clip. Yeah, all right. The flyer from campaign group Better Wellington attacks what it calls wasteful spending. Among the claims that council wants mosques to broadcast the Islamic call to prayer. And the reason it's obvious that this is some kind of xenophobic statement is that it's got nothing to do with wasteful spending. It's not going to cost anybody the opportunity for this to happen on a particular day for a particular reason that I all think we remember quite vividly in March. Um, now, it, so so it, this has been couched as a, we want them to not spend too much money. By the way, can we shut those Muslims up? That's not okay. That's got nothing to do with saving money. Sorry, Trevor, you're going to say something? Yeah, just absolutely tanking on and removing it from all context. Yeah. Once the city uh, six mosques have broadcast the Islamic call to prayer across the city. What? Three times a day, like yeah, they do that, over there in the stands, that's what they want people to react to. Yeah, and that's basically what the union says right here. Across the city. No context. Is this every day? Is it six times a day? The council says staff were asked to clarify noise rules for calls to prayer on the anniversary of the March 15th terror attack. To use us as a political football to get a message across, that's shameful. And they should really look at themselves. He says the Kilburnie Mosque wanted to check with council they could have their call to prayer outside as part of commemorations. This is a classic case where people are deliberately inciting hate against a vulnerable community. And we have no legislative, no, no scaffolding to support us. But the campaign group says the council has lost focus and shouldn't be involved in religious activities. It's emblematic of the fact they're thinking about social justice rather than getting the rates down and fiscal responsibility. Oh. He disagrees the content expresses hostility toward the Islamic community. We've put it there to highlight the issues at Wellington City Council. We have no position on religion and we don't want Wellington City Council to either. Why are they meddling in this? New Zealand. I wonder how much of a fuss they've ever put out with like the cathedral bells ringing, you know? Oh, because you, the cathedral you, you bells mean, ringing in the central city are, is a religious experience, you know? That yeah, I wonder. I wonder Catholic, how often the they've Christian done uh, spent probably to tens of not. At. Yeah, I wonder how often they've complained about that. Post declined an interview, but says it's not appropriate to censor what it will and won't deliver. The State Owned Enterprises Act. It's very clear that New Zealand Post is to be an organisation that exhibits a sense of social responsibility. The union's calling for the Human Rights Commission to intervene as the Posties' protest continues. Kate Nicole williams one So the, let's have a first crack at that, but there is a lot more to go on this, actually. It's actually quite a full topic to talk about, including who the heck are these uh, dudes and dudettes. But here's the actual flyer to start with, right? Now, Chewy. Do you notice anything in the wording? Uh, have we heard this before? Wellington, take back your city. Make from, Wellington great again. From the unknown Getting enemy. Getting back on track. Yeah, Are take back from war? who? Is there any mention is the of obvious war question. yet? Um, and so, and here is the, the, the line in particular, wants the... Uh, city's six mosques to broadcast the Islamic prayer to call a uh, call to prayer, sorry, across the city. Yeah, in commemoration of 51 New Zealanders being killed at gunpoint in our worst terrorist uh, act New Zealanders ever seen, and is still 
in some part broken in half because of. Here's the question, right, Chewie? Here's the question. Do you think that these people would have a problem on Anzac Day with, say, a 21 gun salute? Do you think these people would have a problem on Christmas Day with the cathedral bells ringing out? If the answer to those two questions is probably not, then what the fuck is this about anything other than Islamophobia? Chewie. There's absolutely no that like it it stands out like dogs' balls compared to the other things that they're they're complaining about. Um yeah. this is just exactly what we're talking about. It, it's the like better Wellington is just another rate payers group that fight. We don't like money being spent on wow. things that we don't like. And also let's chuck in a good dose of uh racism wherever we can. Is that what they're about? So there was a press release done uh, to Scoop today. Uh, Scoop did a story on this, and I think they got some of uh, both of the both of the um, perspectives on there. Uh, and I want to read from you the response from ratepayers, um, the ratepayers people. What are they really called? Better Wellington. Just oh. all I want you to do is listen to the phrasing and see if this kind of wording is reminiscent of in, any aspect of. Uh, the political world that is becoming uglier and uglier at the moment. Wellington City Council is installed by the Labour and Green parties. Don't want Wellington oh, residents to read that. our flyer. Attempts to subvert the communication and distribution of facts to Wellington residents is an attack on the principles of freedom of speech and freedom of information. In all caps, this is not the first time that councillors have tried to censor information or subvert these principles. These buzzwords, these keywords like free speech. Um, you know, but, but I'm, I'm just so surprised woke's not in there somewhere. And this leads back to this idea of, no, I'm not saying that this is an Atlas Network, you know, poster child, but it's that world that uses these things as 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 coded language yeah there you go uh coded language uh with a very different a very different agenda behind it yeah they're all reading from the same songbook yeah so and this is uh this is the actual site better wellington uh and in, in big bold letters let's take our city back back our city from whom from whom are we taking our city back you know um wokesters and green party communists so um you can see some of the people who are involved in it. this is alistair boyce uh and he is the person who you saw on the article uh this is also alistair boyce i think it's alistair boyce oh yeah, yeah he's having a wee cuddle there yeah we cuddle there cuddle now chemo child the next bit that we're going to share with you is what you just call him? I just got I worked past that and then heard it in the back of my head. Uh, the next bit we're going to we're going to share with you. We are going to share with you with a, with a grain of salt because we haven't seen any of the evidence pointing to this from behind. But debunking uh, debunking debunking conspiracies Aotearoa have done some work on this today, um, and this goes back to the people who are our people, and they've got basically gone through and they've done some research on the people who are involved with this, so you can know who is behind that. As I said grain of salt uh, and i will say allegedly because this is what they've put out there i haven't seen the evidence to this yet so we'll, we'll take it with a grain of salt but here we go tobacco and whaling lobbyist glenn inwood tobacco and friends and whaling. what whaling are getting pretty upset okay. their latest disinformation and conspiracy theories are not welcomed by posties after the division and hate they've caused to help their friends like Shane Jones into power using the freedom movement. They're not giving up campaigns to keep manipulating the citizens of Aotearoa into supporting the foreign corporations. They help to export out, exploit our country. Here's a reminder of who better Wellington is who's behind better Wellington and why are they trying to influence local politics in the capital? Windbag is the spin-offs Wellington issues column written by our Wellington right. editor, Joel McManus. It's made possible thanks to the supporters of the spin-off members. Better Wellington, I can, I'm assuming they're saying that this has come out of Windbag. I'm assuming because they've listed it that way. Better Wellington, a conspiracy-aligned right-wing political campaign group, is making moves to influence the 2025 
local body election. The group was briefly active during the 2022 election, taking out some newspaper ads endorsing um, candidates. But in the past few weeks, it has relaunched with a more intense focus than before. Better Wellington launched Twitter and Facebook pages in July, and its blog has been active since June 24. Most of the content the group posts are pretty uh, standard right-wing opposition to Wellington local issues, cycleways, rate rises, Māori wards, and so on. But sometimes the mask slips. A series of satirical videos created by the group refer to Mayor Tori Fano as a diversity hire, aiming to, quote, further the trans agenda. The video focus on Farno's admitted drinking problems and she is depicted drunk driving. The Twitter account constantly reshares anti-trans posts about Olympic athletes. Excuse me for a sec. Back again. None of the content has received much attention. The group has 69 followers on Twitter and 10 on Facebook at the time of publication. Okay, so this is the spinoff. Uh, but it's not the reach that's notable. It's the uh, quantity of posts the pages are regularly posting original, often detailed content. There is some significant effort being put in here, and the people behind it are apparently committed to continuing until the 2025 local body elections. Who is behind Better Wellington? The website was registered by Paul Hefferman, whose name is also on the authorizing statement. Hefferman previously ran a business named MindShift, which he promoted as a unique, powerful, and transformational program designed to remove anxiety and depression within two to three days, priced from $1,500 to $6,000. So uh, snake oil. Uh, I'm not saying that. We're just saying, what's, obviously, there was an image there for um for stuff as well. Gary Moller, Paul Heffernan, and uh, Glenn Inwood. Gary Moller is also listed as a founding supporter. Uh, Moller was at the parliamentary process in 2022, is a regular guest on Reality Check Radio, has written for Cameron Slater's blog, The BFD, he wrote a series of articles in 2023 uh, arguing the splintered, quote, freedom movement, end quote, uh, should unite behind New Zealand first and encourage his followers to join the party and influence it from within. Glenn Inwood is the author of most of Better Wellington's blog posts. Inwood is a longtime political operative who has uh, worked for Imperial Tobacco and various entities in the whaling industry. He was highly involved in the 2022 parliamentary protest and served as a go-between uh, for protests and ACT leader David Seymour. Inwood spoke uh, at the unsilenced anti-trans event at Takina earlier this year. We're still going. A lot to go. Hang on. Glenn Inwood. Uh, da, 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 at the unsilenced event at Tarkina. Inwood is the man behind the Resistance Kiwi, a conspiracy website, social media account, and Telegram group, most of which are now defunct. The Resistance Kiwi Twitter account appears to have been the original source of the false online rumors spread oh, last year cool. about a video of Tori Fano. The account posted the earliest public reference to the rumors seven days before RNZ published a story based on them without any evidence that the video existed you can have a chat now chewy while i take a break so this absolute grab bag of grifters <laughs> i mean better wellington or cooked wellington because that seems to be the flagpole that they're waving around I, I I think it's it's curious that they have the money to put in this this amount of effort and a massive glossy flyer drop. Um, and we've spoken about this before. I, I mean, we can't see any really clear links, but these are the sort of astroturf groups that we will see spin up, and they always seem to be issues that are on Atlas Group's radar. Yeah, similar language at least, eh? And, and, and the yep. thing you just said, the thing I found most interesting about that article is the amount of detail, not, not that there's a lot of followers, there could be now, but there wasn't then, the amount of detail, right, that is put into the product that they're putting out, even if it's not going out to many people. Now, we can tell you that something with a lot of detail takes a lot of time, and a lot of time typically takes a fair amount of money. So it's being bankrolled from somewhere. Don't know where, but somewhere. Unbelievable. Like, I, I like, and when you started on this, I haven't pre read this, but uh, when you started on this, I was like, I, those rumors that went around about this video of Tori Farnham, I'm like, I 
but as you went further and further i was just like i bet these guys have their fingerprints all over it. this video that everybody's seen but no one can produce yeah um and, and those those rumors were disgraceful the language that was used was disgraceful uh the joy that they took and someone that was admitting that they had a problem was disgraceful and these guys want to pretend that they're you know a respectable group of people that just bringing up honest held concerns of lots of wellington's residents get fucked yeah and absolutely now, not it's something that we need to keep on the radar now i know it's a it's going to obviously be a wellington issue but i think what you'll see is this as Chewie said the idea of astroturfing uh these things will start popping up more and more and more you know the guys uh voices for fuckwits is that what they called they they mm. did a lot of work around that protest and they've spun it off into a you know significantly well-funded media organization and they'll be back trying to um get within parliament uh get within local bodies and and uh, you know and make changes and i, I think what you're going to see is more and more and more and more of these um so it's one to keep aware of especially if you're in wellington uh, but also we'll keep a focus on it as well i think just to make sure that uh, you have the uh, information you need to actually push back against it. Uh, do you want to do the super chats too? Um, um, oh, before before we do that, I do want to highlight, of, uh, of course, David Seymour uh, jumping in with obviously sure, sure. the biggest concern uh, about this. Um, at Parliament, ex party leader David Seymour said that he did not think it was the role of the postal union to decide what items they wanted to deliver or not. People yeah. have a right to express themselves and the post office and its employees should be working to uphold that right. It is absolutely not the right of any union to tell the public what they can and can't hear. Now, a couple of things that I ha have concern with about this. Um, so we can send anything through the mail? Yeah, that's the next question. Because I have it? a right to express myself? Mm. Well, look out... David Seymour's neighborhood, I want to distribute a glossy flyer picturing the back of my balls and anus. And that is a right for me to express myself. And I should force posties to do it. I will follow that up with a drop of Mein Kampf because I just think he's got something to say. What absolute nonsense from David Seymour. Absolute I just, nonsense. Think I think what you missed here, though, bro, is that Mein Kampf might be taken on board quite happily by some of the recipients in the area you're talking about so oh yeah 100 but this this whole thing of like you have a job so you should not have any personal opinions about what you're delivering yeah is fucking nonsense it's also i mean i'm i'm i'm, I'm now uh, godwin's law okay i'm going to godwin's law right now but it's also the exact to an extreme exact example of what someone like the Nazis would say, well, I was just ordered to do it. You know, I'm not, I don't have a moral, you know, I've got no moral compass. I was told to do it. So I did it. Like, of course, you've got the right to say, this is morally reprehensible. I'm not going to participate in it. Of course. Of course. Yeah. 100%. I like, I like, I've, in, in my own, in a former role, um, I refused to serve someone that had visible neo Nazi tattoos and clothing. And that became an issue. Oh, you've got to treat all the customers the same. No. No, yeah, no, true. I don't. I refuse to do this. This is my line in the sand. David Seymour thinks that everybody should just, you're being paid by someone, so you've got to do it. You're not allowed to have any personal opinions. That is bullshit, David. I would like to see you come on and justify that to me. Instead, you've seen an opportunity to punch down on a union and stick up for a group pushing the same reprehensible beliefs that a lot of your supporters and your Atlas group pals want pushed. Mm. You're transparent. I can see right through you, you spineless little toad. I think what we need to get out of you, Chewy, is a little bit more honesty with what you believe. Because sometimes when you're talking, we don't quite get the real message as to what you're trying to share. So I speak maybe in you metaphor. Could, maybe you could feel my true feelings. But maybe, yeah, maybe this is why David David's not coming on the show because he's he's scared to get called out. Little jelly. Man, I I've already got. I honestly I did it. I did it while I was while I was off. I like I have my five questions. I've already got them. If he ever decides to come on, I don't think they will. 
Anyway, um, there's a few just, chats just and super chats and stuff in there. David, I'll, come on the show, mate. I'll wear a gimp mask and not say anything. I'll just sit in the corner and just do this. And I'll let Pat do all the talking. I won't be mean to you because I'll have a ball gag in my mouth. Oh, God. Come on, David. Like, if, um, if, he's, if he's scared of being called a jellyfish man and, and a white supremacist, I'll wear a ball gag. Um.